welcome to this month's background building video. Um, I've done this technique a few times on my crafty channel, um, but obviously I don't speak on that channel, so some people may have like missed the kind of technique. Um, but it's using um, distress crayons and gesso to create your background, and using um, a stencil to remove some of the colour as well. So, um, I just bought, well, say just bought, it was a couple of months ago now, the um, metallic distress crayons, so I wanted to give them a try with this technique too, and I've got my other colours. I think I, I got um, three of the sets and then I bought a couple um, individually too, just so I had the like my favourite distress colours. Um, I think I got them as a birthday present or Christmas present last year, I can't remember. But um, yeah, so I thought this would be a nice technique to show, and it's actually one um, that I first saw Joggles do, and I'll link her channel below because I really love watching her channel. Well, she's called Barbara, but the channel's Joggles. Um, so I'm going to use one of uh, the Joggles stencils to do the stenciling as well, as you know, it's just nice. I'm going to show you two ways actually of doing stenciling because you can stencil over, well, you can stencil through a stencil or over a mask with the Distress Crayons using um, the Mini Ink Blending Tool, or you can do the um, Baby Wipe technique where you lift off the colour. So I'm going to show you both. So, um, the first thing you need to do is add some gesso to your piece of card. I just did that one so it would definitely be definitely be try. I'm just using this um, Pebio gesso. I got it off Amazon, so I shall link that below. Um, and I just like squirt a bit onto my palette knife. You don't want to add too much. So you just like want to do um, a thin, scrapey layer across it. I quite like the effect you get when you use a palette knife. You can use a brush, but um, I'm just lazy and can't bother to go and wash it. So using a palette knife is just quicker and easier for me. And you get um, cool texture too. I will show it to the camera in a sec and see if you can see it. You can even like create texture if you wanted to, but I like I like the texture, but I still like it to be smooth. But you know, you get these little bits of texture. I'll show you on the dry one. This on this side. Can you kind of see that? Sort of little blobby bits where it's sort of come off of the palette knife in a blobby pattern. That creates a cool effect because the um, distressed crayons will kind of soak into the actual card. So when you're lifting colour. Um, you're only going to lift it off the gessoed areas, so then you get like a broken pattern, and I really like that look. So that's that one we'll leave to dry. It'll probably be um, dry whilst I'm yapping on, but we'll do this. I actually need to go and get some baby wipes, so we'll be back in a second. Okay, I'm back. So that's the dried one, so we'll leave that one because that was one we just did. It doesn't take that long to dry, but I wanted to make sure um, it was definitely dry for showing you the technique. So, we need to pick what colours we want to use. So, my favourite colours are purple and pink, but my camera is really terrible at picking them up, so maybe I'll go for like cooler colours. Um, I know I've done this technique with these three before, but I want to do something different. I'm going to go really bright and vibrant. And maybe do these, I could bring in the orange, and then if I need to I might bring in some purple too. Although, which colour of these am I then going to use? Because I want to bring in a bit of the metallic just to try them out because I haven't used them yet. So, maybe the bronzy colour, antique bronze, yeah, I'll go with that. Um, and then, if I'm going to do some stenciling, I've got a sponge with orange in already. And I can always get a new sponge if I wanted to do purple or something. And the sponges are just the um, Mini Ink Blending Foam Refills from Ranger. And they fit on the, the Tim Holtz uh, Mini Ink Blending Tool as well. Okay, so if we get on with the main part of the technique. So, how to cover the background. You could go straight in and just like scribble all over it. Um, or you can do small patches with different colours and then come back in and blend it with your finger afterwards, which is what I do. So, we'll start with some mustard seed. I like to try and 
use a really light pressure but also try and turn the crayon as I'm scribbling so I try and keep that point as much as possible just in case I need it for a future project. I mean it's not going to be the exact nice point that it was when it was a brand new crayon but um, you know if you can try and keep it fairly like that kind of a shape just in case you need it for something if you want to get into fine detail it's nice to just try and keep the shape this one I didn't <laughs> it's got a bit blunt but anyway okay what one is this oh it is spice marmalade it just looks a bit dull coming out the crayon so that I said that didn't I mustard seed and then spice marmalade just a little bit then we've got abandoned coral that's quite a powerful colour so then picked raspberry okay I like pink so <laughs> and then seedless preserves too one of my favourites I think I bought this one separately because I really love this colour in the normal distress range and then I obviously haven't tried this before so I'm hoping it'll work I'm going to add in a bit of the what's it called antiqued bronze just in various places and then I'll sort of blend it all in together it might not be that noticeable but we could always do our stenciling with this colour too if we want to so now you've got this that looks like a right mess you can start to blend it. You can just use your finger or um, you could use a baby wipe but then you'll get a really light um, colour or you can tap your finger to the baby wipe and that really helps get a nice smooth blend because you're sort of like adding a little bit of wet to your finger to help the crayons move. I didn't really think about that, I've put purple next to yellow but never mind we go around, we do them sort of um, in the same colour at the same time, we shouldn't get too much contamination, we want them to blend a little bit but where I've put purple next to yellow we don't really want to get a brown, if I use another finger we could go with the abandoned coral colour We could go picked raspberry. Okay, and then we can come back in with um, to do the purple. They do kind of get more muted, obviously, as you do this, because you're sort of watering them down a little bit. But um. I think that looks alright, it, looks, it is going a bit brown in places but that could just be the copper. So that's our initial background which looks a little bit rubbish but um, we can do some more things to make it look a bit better. So uh, which one of my stencils do I want to use now? Okay I think I'm going to go with this one which is actually called Starflower Mask. I'm actually going to chop the top of the packaging off because I find it easier get them in and out of the packet that way. I'm going to put the packaging up the wrong way in that one so okay. so for this one I want to do the um, crayon over the top and I think I will actually use the burnish burnished bronze, is that what it was called? No, antiqued bronze, because it's kind of got a bit hidden. So, you want to get your mini ink blending tool and your clean foam and add it to there. You can scribble this onto your glass mat pick it up, or you can just scribble it straight into the foam, which I find is better, I think you waste less. So you want to, that's probably how some of my crayons have got rounded, because they kind of, kind of rounds it off, but anyway. 
you can always use them more on that on an angle later to get that pointy shape back so you want to do that then you do want to squish this onto your mat too just to get the colour more evenly into the sponge then you just want to bring it to your card and I'm sort of using like a pounce twist motion especially with um, stencils or masks that have got um, delicate areas it's quite nice just to do that kind of a motion I'm not sure how much um, of a detailed look we're going to get with this because you know it, this is sort of a more of a mask so you're I don't know you're kind of filling in the negative of the pattern rather than actually putting a pattern on if that makes any sense but we're just giving the whoa that was wrong we're just giving the background um, a little bit of extra interest it doesn't matter if it's not like um, properly visible what it is I mean this isn't showing up that much so I might come in with that orange sponge and do some orange sponging onto it as well they do have sparkle to them though these um, metallic crayons so that's a nice look so I'm going to switch the sponge out and put the orangey coloured one on I'm not sure what colour I used on this before but we will go with abandoned coral I think it looks like it was probably that and then just blend that into the sponge and go in some of the lighter areas so that we really see um, that we've added something you just want to hold the stencil down um, wherever you're working as well you can use tape but I always find it's like such a waste of tape then I get all mean about using a lot of tape and I find it's, it feels like such a waste to put like a whole metres worth of tape out just to hold a stencil still when you could do it with your hand but anyway, you, you do whatever you want to do Okay, I think that'll be good enough. So we've just got some subtle extra patterning on the background. Then we want to clean our stencil. Again, you've got to be um, a little bit careful just because of the intricate portions of the stencil. You don't want to bend any of the pieces. I'm just going to rub gently with a baby wipe just to clean it off. I mean, they do dry um, pretty much permanent, the um, Distress Crayons, but um, I just like having clean stencils because I'm weird, so that's clean enough, I think. So we can dry this off. Oh no, that had gesso on it. <laughs> okay, then I want to show you the lifting technique. So I'm going to use another juggle stencil, I need to cut the top of this packaging off too. I have used these before, I was just opening and closing the packet, but I get fed up with it sometimes, so it's easier just to do it this way. Again, I put that packaging up the wrong way, so i switch that around. And this stencil is called Endless. baby wipe and then we'll place this over the top maybe on a place that's got smaller swirls and then we, again you want to hold the stencil down and then you want to just take your baby wipe and wipe through the openings and you're lifting off the colour then you don't want it to be too wet because if you squeeze this oh I'm not really in frame if you squeeze this and put it over the top um, it's going to bleed underneath the stencil and you're going to lose some of the definition of your pattern and you'll be able to see in places where um, there's patchy gesso or no gesso you get this really cool look of where it's only, I'll show you afterwards where it's only uh, picking up part of the colour which I really like that's shifted a bit but that's alright um, if we go around this one here you can pick up as much or as little as you want, um, it's up to you, and that's really moved so that's probably going to be terrible, but anyway. Um, let's try a bit over here. Let's 
probably not the best stencil to do this part with, but anyway, it shows you the technique. Here as well, I think. I haven't tried yet, but I'm thinking that this might work if you had a patterned paper or maybe a patterned card or maybe you'd made a background um, and if you added clear gesso over it and then tried it. I want to give that a go. I haven't done it yet though. But I think it might work. And there we go. For that, you can see how we picked off some of the the colour, it looks, uh, it makes like a really interesting background that someone's going to struggle to figure out how you did it. I mean that is a little bit ab abstract because of, um, you know, these are quite large stencils, I probably should have gone with smaller stencils, but I could go back in with a smaller stencil now, so I might do that. So, um, let's have a look for a smaller stencil that we think will work. You want something that's quite a strong design, that's easy to um, to see, really. Mm -hmm. I'm never going to go for this one. I can't remember the exact name. I think it's called like Moroccan or something. This one's a um, that special touch mask as well. So, what do we want to do with this? colour wise I think that we're going to need to go purple to make it striking so that it really stands out so I can get another sponge out and the great thing about this is um, it doesn't dry crusty and hard in the sponges so you can just keep your sponges um, in whatever container you're keeping all of your crayons in um, and you can just keep using them whenever you need to as well Actually, I think I might mix. I think I'm going to go pink and purple, just to be different. I think I said at the beginning I was going to steer away from pink and purple, but obviously that didn't happen. But anyway, I think it kind of picks up on camera. It's just annoying because it never looks as good, but anyway. So we're just doing that same... Um, like pouncing, twisting motion just to get some of the colour on there and we want to go in some of the lighter areas too but we don't want to like obliterate the lighter areas we can just add a bit more on I find it's better to put less in your sponge and then come back because you don't need that much and if you put more in all of that's going to come out straight away so then you're going to be ending up using more and more because you're putting so much into the sponge whereas you could get away with using less so if we just keep adding see now if we were, this is like a third layer in this section because we did the stenciling we did the lifting and now we're doing more stenciling so it really builds up a cool layered background and it doesn't take too long because I've been filming like 15 minutes I think so kind of a quick process to make a really cool layered background. There, I think that looks better. It's sort of added in some extra like depth to it. And you can also like heat emboss over this as well. You don't have to leave it just as it is. You can add heat embossing or you can just die cut it and create your die cuts out of it. Um, I'm not sure how I'm going to finish this card yet but I wanted to get this background building video done. If I finish the card there'll be photos at the end. Um, I might do another one actually. I feel like I want to just do another one. So let's pick some different colours and do another background. Maybe less colours this time because maybe that was a bit too many colours. Mm -hmm. Kind of got a little bit out of control. Okay, so this was the one we put the gesso on at the beginning. Um, I really do love Twisted Sit Down. So I'm going to go said less colours and now I'm picking out loads again. I need a dark colour in there but it's like I'm going to go with them. And then I'm going to use the silver which is burnished pewter. 
So I'm going to go with these this time. And we want to do the same thing for um, getting the colour onto here as well. Actually, I might do it differently. I'm going to do the same thing, but I think I'm going to do it in stripes. Just as a different effect. So this one is tumbled glass. Again, I'm like rolling the crayon as I go to try and keep that pointy shape. It doesn't matter if you lose it, but it's quite nice to try and keep it just in case you want it later on. Then you don't have to like waste um, crayon trying to sharpen it into a point for whatever project you need the point for. So that was tumbled glass. Then we want twisted citron. Then a bit of peacock feathers, yep. A bit up there maybe. And then finally a bit of mermaid lagoon. I'm gonna blend this first and then add the um what's it called? brush to pewter. So again you're just like tapping your finger on the baby wipe. It just helps you blend the colours easily and again I'm going to go with all the kind of lighter colours first because we want, we want it to look blended but we don't want it to get muddy. We want to keep some of the actual colours in the background too rather than just making it all like one colour. And then we go Twisted Citron. some of the, I keep forgetting the name of it, brushed pewter <laughs> over the top and then I'll blend that into, I think in adding, still in the stripe theme, just like four or five different stripes within the background and again using the baby wipe to help blend that a little bit just so it's not so like harsh stripes. Can you see the metallic of this? If we go back to the other one. You can, you can just about see that little sparkle that's in that metallic element. I think it comes up more when it's dry. Because I don't think you can really see it on this. Maybe a tiny bit. Anyway, so that's that part of the background. Now, what stencils do I want to use this time? I have a blue sponge in here, I'm sure I do. So, we can add, I do really like that one, it turned out really nicely actually, but we could do it this way, make it look like a completely different pattern. And, what blue, we'll go with peacock feathers. into the sponge again and then use that pouncy twisty motion And depending on what colour you're going to go over the top of, you're going to get a subtle or a more defined look as well. So there we go. 
that's what that looks like on this one and I'm thinking I've got some star shaped punchinella if I can, yes I can see it I'm going to go and get a piece of that and we will lift off the colour using punchinella instead of a stencil I bought this punch now, mostly. I can't speak. I bought this punch now mostly to use on my jelly plate, but um, I think it's going to look really nice for this technique actually, because it's going to—it's a small pattern, so the elements will look nice and defined, and you'll really be able to tell what the pattern is as well, rather than the sort of abstract look of the endless stencil on the other one. You can see there actually it's gone a bit splodgy where some of the moisture's got underneath the um, punchinella so you just want to be a little bit wary of that you can sort of dab that up um, but oh yeah the, um, one of the things about the distress crayons is if you did this background and you sprayed it with water it's not going to move you have to actually like apply friction to it to make the colour move that's why you have to wipe it with a baby wipe Whereas if you had done this background with spray inks, you could just um, spray with water and do the ghosting effect um, to get these pattern on. But because um, of the nature of the Distress Crayons, you have got to actually um, apply some friction to the crayon to get it to move. And um, this is only working because we've got that gesso underneath. If we just did this straight on the card, um, as you'll see in some areas where the gesso's not reached the edges of the card um, it, it won't remove the colour so if you see down this edge of the card um, there's a half star there I did go over the whole star but part of it is on the actual card not the gesso so it's not lifting but I like that look um, a little bit more maybe a smidgen more up here Yeah, that looks good. And I mean, you can even add more layers to this. You can add stamping, you can add heat embossing, you can just use this to uh, die cut things from. You could have die cut sentiments out of this. You could do this exact same technique in an art journal. Um, you could do it on an A4 piece of card so you've got four backgrounds instantly. You could do it however you like. But um, there's just two different versions. That one's more random splodges of the colours, and this one's in stripes of how to use um, Distress Crayons and Gesso to create background. So I hope you enjoyed this month's background building video. Uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye!